I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it in the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, those of my own race, the people of, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption of sons. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship and the promises. Theirs are the partridges, or the patriarchs. And from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. It is not as though God's word had failed. For not all who are descendants of Israel are Israel, nor because are they his descendants are they Abraham's children. On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, it is not the natural children who are God's children, but it is the children of promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this is how the promise was stated. At the appointed time, I will return, and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but Rebekah's children had one in the same father, our father Isaac, yet before the twins were born, or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose and election might stand, not by works, but by him who calls. She was told the older will serve the younger. Just as it is, just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not therefore depend on man's desire or effort, but God's mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. One of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us? For who resists his will? But who are you, O oh man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to him who formed it? Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make of the same lump of clay some pottery of noble purpose and some of common use? What if God, choosing to show his wrath, um, choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience the objects of his wrath, prepared for destruction? What if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of his mercy, whom he prepared in advance for glory, even us? whom he also called, not only from the Jews, but also from the Gentiles, as he says in Hosea. I will call them my people who are not my people, and I will call her my loved one who is not my loved one. And it will happen that in this very place where I said to them, you were not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. Isaiah cries out concerning Israel. Though the numbers of, Israel, though the, numbers of the Israelites be like the sand of the sea, only the remnants will be saved, for the Lord will carry out his sentence on the earth with speed and finality. It is just as Isaiah said previously, unless the Lord Almighty had left us descendants, we would have become like Sodom and we would have been like Gomorrah. God is a ruler and he rules how he sees fit. The only thing we can do is pray and seek out what his plan is for that particular person while maintaining the fruit of the spirit. He looked at the young man in Mark 10, 21 with love because he saw fit to. We can't make any judgment calls lest he gives us authority to, but we must safeguard that authority he entrusts to us because just like Moses, if we misuse our authority, we too can miss out on our blessings. But we have to do it with the fruit he says we must have in order for, for us and people to know that he dwells within us. All we can do is humble ourselves, be led by God, and let him run this. I personally think that God allows us to be mind-boggled to keep us humble and trusting in him. God knows if a human being is a flicker or a foundation to be built upon, so we have to just trust. From what I'm reading, I see God saying, I'll be angry when I want to be angry. I'll show compassion when I want to show compassion, and I'll unconditionally love where I want to unconditionally love. I always tell people, it's your walk with Jesus. Just because someone does not understand does not give them the right to dictate your walk with our holy, precious God, lest God tells them to. But God would have told you to submit to them, and you would have, ha and you would have peace about it, just like Ruth did with her uncle. And she also fasted about it, too. If God tells you to talk to somebody and you're afraid to talk to them about God, then you have to ask God to remove that fear so you can be bold in Christ, not lacking anything. If God tells you not to talk to someone, you might not be strong enough to talk to that person yet, lest they drag you into the pit because of your uncrucified weak flesh. It's just a trusting relationship, us trusting the Father. 
So I'm going to lift my hands up and say, I trust you, God. But please, my brothers and sisters, seek out the Lord. Search in his word like you would search for rubies and gold. It's a consistent, unrepentant heart that bears no fruit. They will not inherit the kingdom, but that's God's decision. To conclude, ask God what he wants because he already knows the outcome. And uh, what I would like to say at the end of this video is I would like to give anybody a chance to receive God um, who has not received God or if this helped you receive God um, and, um, and give you a little advice. Walking, having a relationship with God is not raising your hand and saying, Jesus, uh, forgive my sins. It's a part of it, but it's, actu it's the actual walk with God. And I'm going to give you a scenario. Say there's a man you work with and he's just this angry, evil, coarse, mean guy. And every time you talk to him, he's like snapping on you. So let's say in this scenario, he gets saved, goes back to work. I come up to him and I'm expecting the same reaction. And he's like, don't come up to me. I'm tired of this. Da, 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 da. And you're like, "Ugh, that's the same reaction I expected from that guy. So you leave. A few minutes later, he comes up to your desk and he goes, you know, I'm trying to be a better person and change and I shouldn't have reacted like that to you. I want to ask for your forgiveness. Will you please forgive me? You're like, what? Did he just apologize? And mind you, this guy has never apologized a day in his life. You've worked with him for 10 years, three, five, okay? And he has not apologized. So you're taken back. That's evidence. And if he keeps walking with God and he keeps bearing the fruit of the spirit, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, you're going to start seeing more changes in that guy. And, and, the, and then his fuses are going to be shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until all he's doing is dealing with them internally. Because God will leave thorns in your flesh so you don't get all puffed up. <laughs> because us as humans, we can get... Uh, um, a whole, we can become a Holy Ghost Junior and start to, you know, act like God and we're too saved. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, it'll be internal, but just because people can't see it doesn't mean you're not dealing with it inside. But you'll start to look more like God and people will go, I want that. God said, our hearts are evil and deceitful and wicked. Who could know? God hating? He's God. Who are you, old man? Who am I to say God can't hate? Now, if our hearts are evil and deceitful and wicked, who could know? We really want to try to stay away from that as much as possible. And God's anger is only for but a moment. You know? And uh, the fruit that he says we must bear is love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. Because there's enough hate and evil in the world already. And the devil has got us so mind controlled that when we think of hate we think of evil but hate is something that you won't go near okay that doesn't make you evil it just characterizes you and the lord showed me that in my fast and he's so amazing but i'm gonna do what my god says and overcome evil with good so that's what i want us to have and i feel like in ministry um we, we need to bear that and we need to have a lot of that because god has a lot of patience or else this world wouldn't even be here he could wipe it out, but he's so full of patience and love and his hope is for everybody to be saved. So we're still here. So if you would like to accept God into your heart, I would urge you to get one of these, to find a, a Christian, a strong believing Christian who will teach you and study with you. And if you need a study partner, I'll study with you. Why not? You know, um, we can do an online Bible study. So why not? So um, just let me know if you got saved and put saved at the bottom. And um, I love you. And let's remember to hold the fruit. And um, so that's just the conclusion that God gave to me. And thank you, Mario. I'm really a uh, I'm happy to be a part of this study. God bless you. And um, God bless you all. Okay.